Hi, I'm your host, Amanda, and this is 10 Question Tuesday. Join us each week as we meet interesting people from across the IG community, just like you. My name is Amanda Freeman, and I'm here today to chat with Toya Aldridge. Toya is the Deputy Assistant Inspector General for Audit with the U.S. Agency for International Development, OIG, and she's been in the OIG community for 20 years. Hi, good morning, Amanda. How are you? I'm wonderful. <laughs> I'm really excited to be here today. I am also equally excited to chat with you. I think we have a lot of good questions. Awesome. Uh, and with that, I will jump right into the first question. Uh, what aspect of your job do you enjoy the most? The people. Um, it's so awesome to, you know, as an auditor, we work in teams. And, you know, every team, it's a, a different group of people. It's a different, uh, a different type of energy. It's, it's really nice to see the light bulb go off with folks um, when we're learning new things and we're, when we're making an impact. So uh, that, that's really what's kept me going for as long as I have in this, uh, in this field. It's interesting um, because uh, our previous interviewee, Adele, said the same thing, people. So that is a commonality amongst you. That's pretty cool. Um, and speaking of impact, what was the biggest win for you as an OIG employee in the past year? So I've been with USAID, it'll be two years in July, and um, our former IG who retired in December, um, when she took over in 2015, our peer review, we received a pass with deficiencies, which mm -hmm. as you may be aware, and anyone in the audit community and the OIG community knows that's not a good thing. And so last year, um, we... Uh, they came back out and did our peer review and we passed mm -hmm. and it was a super exciting time. Um, thanks to all of our staff and leadership, um, during that time to really turn things around and get us over that hump. So I would have to say that's been the most exciting thing, um, really just organizationally that has happened in the last Being year. Being able to impact and turn something around in that way, I'm sure is super, uh, super cool to be a part of. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so maybe this is in line with that. What uh, is the professional accomplishment you are most proud of? Well, actually that, so that, that one's actually a different answer. So right. um, <laughs> several years ago when I was with uh, the Department of Transportation Office of Inspector General, um, I was leading um, some work on sexual assault and harassment at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. And that was during a time, I mean, that, that issue is always extremely important and significant, but that was during the time where it had a lot of significant interest on the Hill. And uh, as a result of our work, we, we as our, my AIG at, at AIGA at the time said, we got the triple crown. We got a SIGI team award, we got the secretary's award and we received an OIG award in that same year. So for that work. So I would say uh, that's probably the most significant personal professional accomplishment I've had in my career. That is pretty profound. Well, now I feel, I feel, you know, like I'm switching it up to something not so, so deep in my next question. <laughs> um, but what are you currently perfecting? Mm. Okay. It could so be personal, one... professional. It doesn't, you know, it can be whatever you want it to be. I think it's a combination of the two. Um, okay. So I am actually in the federal internal coach training program. Oh. So I am working on receiving my uh, professional coaching certification. And um, I sort of, by happenstance, got involved in that program um, through SIGI. And uh, for the, since what, October of last year or September of last year, we have one week of training virtual training, uh, six hours a day, you know, three days out of the week for the one week. And it has been the most rewarding, life-changing experience that I've ever had. Um, coaching is just, it, it is really something that just helps you personally. And it, it's also great to see how it helps other people connect to themselves and dealing with and working through challenges in their life, either professionally or personal. So that is that's been something I've been working on since again, September, October, and it's just been the most rewarding experience I've ever had in my, my life personally and professionally. Do you think that um, having that experience where you are helping other people um, learn how to work through their own issues uh, also gives you tools and techniques to help improve and work through your own? Absolutely. 
I, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it's so funny. I always like when I'm dealing with something either personally or professionally, I always sort of stop and I put my coaching hat on and ah. coach myself through, you know, how to think through the issue and, and, and resolve or, or, you know, find a breakthrough. So, yeah. And, and it's also great just as a supervisor, you know, yeah. um, to really help the folks that I work with and, and, and put on my coaching hat with them as well. Uh, in my experience trying to learn how to be a supervisor, I find that that is uh, great advice is trying to step back and put a different hat on when you're trying to look at something from a different perspective. So it sounds like you're gaining a lot of really good knowledge from that. That's really cool. Yes, you nailed it. You're absolutely yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of switching it up again. What are you reading or listening to right now? I'm a uh, audio learner, so okay. I uh, like audio books. But I'm also I'm actually listening to a uh, I'm a true crime fan first and foremost. Oh, yes. Anything, <laughs> anything, anything true crime. I know like Investigation Discovery. They have these commercials about these people who are like addicts, and I am an <laughs> idea. But um, I'm listening to a podcast called Manslaughter um, about. A, it was a I love I love hearing about crimes that aren't well known. Okay. And this was about a woman who seemingly, I haven't finished it yet, so I say seemingly, I don't know what's going to happen in the end, uh, got away with murder back in the 70s of her husband. Ooh. So, um, yeah, and it's we're hearing the story from the husband's niece perspective and members of his family. And so I'm like, it's really interesting. Do you listen to um, Crime Junkies? That's the true crime one yeah. that I... I've been told about that podcast. I have yet to listen to that. Are you are you a true crime fan as well? I I am. Yeah, I think if you like, um, one of the biggest things I like about Crime Junkies is uh, the narrative. Like it's a a conversation between the two interviewees about how they they're finding out the information, um, as opposed to just one narrator talking about it. So I, I like the the dynamics of the of the podcast. Anyway, if you like true crime, yes, yes. totally recommend Crime Junkies. Thank you. I'm gonna <laughs> add it to my playlist. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. So let's get to um, the video that you did for the um, diversity, equity, equity and inclusion. Um, well, it was supposed to be for the leadership forum, but was just published, or we just did that as part of the Siggy Town Hall. Um, what led you to decide to create that video for the leadership forum? Um. Well, everything that was going on in America last year and, you know, just sort of looking around my organization and talking with, um, you know, different diverse groups of people, if you will, whatever mm -hmm. that diversity was, um, and just sort of hearing, you know, how this, what was going on was challenging them and sort of what that looked like in the workplace. And, you know, I just felt really inspired to uh, as a as a as a as an African American woman in an executive position in the government, really sort of talk about the importance of being an inclusive leader and the importance of inclusive leadership, regardless of of who you are, uh, your race, gender, um, and, and ethnicity. And so it, I was just really inspired to sort of be a voice out there about the importance of of, of creating an inclusive organizational culture and being an, an inclusive leader. Uh, was there anything in that video that afterwards you thought you wanted to include and didn't or that you wanted to share points that you wanted to share that maybe you um you thought of afterwards um i think i, I maybe more of uh some content like one part i talked about some of the things that get in the way of us being inclusive and, you know, I think, you know, in looking at looking back at the videos, maybe pro providing more content or examples of that, because a lot of the, a lot of those things you just we unknowingly engage in. And so I think it's, it was good to bring some awareness to people. So we're going to switch it up again a little bit. Um, <laughs> what hurdles have you had to overcome as a female in the federal government, if any? Well, you know, uh, yeah, absolutely, I have. And, and I was going to say, know, I'm sure there is. I put the if any at the end yeah, of that. I well, guess I was a little hopeful, but I should be more realistic. <laughs> well, you know, there may be, I, you know, I'd love to hear uh, from other women in the community. It just maybe they haven't. But I think just in general, um, finding your voice, right, as a woman. Um, I was reading someone sent an article the other day about uh, how certain people make it into leadership and they they do so because they confuse confidence with competence, right? The Ooh, person who always yeah. speaks up, who always has something to say in an authoritative way, oftentimes is confused as being competent. Um, I like that. The article, and I've seen it and you've probably seen it as well yep. in your career. And I think women, we generally 
we don't say anything unless we are confident and 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 feel like it's going to add to the conversation. And so I think as a woman, for me personally, it's been finding my voice um, and and really sort of as a result of that, getting that confidence uh, to show others that I am in fact competent. I like that. I feel like I need to make that a hashtag or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Confidence and competence. I like that. Well, so this might play into that a little bit. Um, what advice would you give to a female in a similar position that was just starting? Uh, I'll tell you, you know, I, you cannot underscore enough the value of mentors ah. and, you know, whatever that means to you, uh, you know, don't be, I, I would cer certainly go outside of your comfort zone in finding mentors, you know, maybe the person doesn't have anything in common with you. Um, I've always often found those to be the best mentors because we're so different and, and there's great value in in those differences from my perspective. So that's something that I think has been extremely valuable. I continue to find mentors uh, and they don't necessarily have to be people who are at a higher level than you. They can be people who are peers or even folks that, that are at a lower level. So I think it's in people outside of your, your field of, of study or, or, or career uh, field. So I think it's important to find mentors um, to really help to give you advice and guidance and to bend their ear on issues uh, particularly professional issues along the, during the course of your career. Uh, I like the idea of having uh, a mentor that is either younger than you or at a lower position than you, because I feel like as a, uh, as we get higher up, um, you know, in our grades and in our uh, experience, we sometimes lose touch with what it was that we did or however we did it, or, you know, what happened below. And that's always good to hear that perspective. Yeah. Uh, I think from that, that level, at least it keeps me level and it keeps me grounded, I think. So, yeah. For sure, that's great. Uh, right. That's really yeah. great advice. I like that a lot. Okay, and our uh, very last question uh, is the um, the one that you didn't know about necessarily, but I think you'll do all right. Uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> I wanted to be what I am. No, I'm kidding. No, did I, mean, you? I, I was going to say, anyone. man, that would be pretty. <laughs> you growing up were like, hey, I really want to be an auditor. Right. I, you, <laughs> Please introduce me to that person. I've never met, yeah. met anyone who actually intentionally went into this. It's great, yeah. but I don't know anyone who did. They sort of stumbled <laughs> into it. No, I, I I wanted to be a forensic pathologist. Can you believe wow. that? Wow. <laughs> I mean, forensics, editing, I mean, auditing, I can see. I mean, there's a little <laughs> bit of, of parallel there. But pathology, interesting. Yeah. What made yeah. you want to do that? Well, you know, I was just, again, and not even sort of realizing now my interest in true crime I just always Ooh. thought it was cool to like figure out you know how someone died or like you know what was the cause like getting to the root cause of death I think it sounds a bit morbid um but then of course I got to college and started taking those biology courses and <laughs> like, like, no. yeah I'm like yeah, I'm like, yeah. let me be an auditor no yeah right funny. I mean it's root cause still right you're finding the root yes. cause cause condition criteria effect you're still in the same sort of thing just different not people or not you know, <laughs> living things not dead things there you go that side of the brain is still being used just in a yeah. different way <laughs> yeah no but to, to be fair though I can totally understand wanting to find the cause of something I mean that's I did, I did I and E's for a while before I got into the training stuff. And that was the most interesting part of it for me was figuring it out, like just like anything else. So I can, I can totally understand that. Forensic pathology. See, this is why I need to keep asking this question. This is part of my favorite part. It's so interesting. Everybody started off so completely different. <laughs> Anyway, all right. So thank you so much for joining us today, Toya. We wish you the best of luck with your career. This is Amanda Freeman signing off. Please give this video a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, uh, never stop asking questions because without questions, there is no learning. Thank you. Bye, Toya. Bye. <laughs>